Nation, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. Copy that. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call the station for a voice check. And uh, is uh, delayed, I hear you loud and clear. We're very happy, happy to have you with us. And we will begin very quickly, uh, right away, with the first question. Hello, Thomas. This is Christian Chappelle for CDC. I'd like to know uh, how did it feel to uh, leave the house, and uh, how do you handle the mission under these conditions? Hello, Christine. Yes, it's a great pleasure to be here. It's my second home. I found friends and habits. There are things that have changed in the station, but there are also things that are identical. Listen, we've already been to work. I've spent almost all of my days since Monday with scientific experiments, two scientific experiments, uh, thanks to which we've lost no time. We have uh, begun at 100 kilometers per hour. And uh, we're looking forward to what is uh, awaiting us. We're all going to work very hard. And if we do, everything will pass very quickly. Hello, Ms. Castell, uh, radio. Uh, hello, Thomas. Can you tell us, describe to us the takeoff day, uh, the uh, feeling that you've had uh, as of the moment of takeoff? And maybe a little bit more critical, when you went to sleep, uh, did you have a false alarm, apparently, and you had to put your uh, spacesuit and your uh, helmet on very fast? Can you describe to us uh, about the spirit or the feeling that you had? Will this be a constant uh, menace or threat uh, until you return? Yes, the uh, takeoff gave us incredible sensations. I hadn't done that for four years. It's a little bit different. Uh, that with Soyuz, I felt upon takeoff. But you know, when you talk, talk about strong sensations uh, from a rocket, uh, the acceleration, the vibrations are incredible. It was really a great uh, moment for me. Uh, we are all had a great big smile. We were all in the capsule. We were serious, of course, but the sensations are such as are phenomenal. Uh, concerning the uh, the alert, uh, the, concerning the uh, debris, was a false alarm. And uh, the space farm uh, was able to uh, uh, get us to NASA safely. It was a good exercise for us. We had gotten all of our things out to uh, spend a tranquil uh, evening. We had all our clothing and our food. We were, had taken everything out. We're all ready. But then with a very calm message that told us, well, the uh, Oregon uh, team, you're going to have to be in your seats, uh, put your uh, helmets uh, closed, just astronaut outfit. Within 40 to 50 minutes, uh, it takes a while. It's rather complicated. We did everything in 19 minutes and 30 seconds. These are things that uh, were not entirely orthodox, but we did everything. And it's a good exercise for us. I don't think it was a danger that uh, threatens us in particular. There were some micro impacts on the station, pretty small things. Uh, larger debris are uh, in another orbit, which are uh, surveilled. Uh, we pay attention to that, uh, especially uh, the uh, European uh, Space Agency uh, takes care to be sure that we're not threatened by uh, larger uh, objects. Uh, everything's in place so that everything will uh, go well. We never have this problem aboard the Space Center or in an inhabited uh, capsule. Uh, and uh, this, of course, subject to the gravitation of Earth. Hello, Thomas. This is uh, what is the moment of the mission that uh, uh, put, that gave you a personal uh, moment or an experience that you experienced uh, that you uh, felt, uh, lived through? Well, there are many moments uh, of this during a mission. Of course, it begins with takeoff, the return. We're not going to be returning uh, right away. I still have 185 days before me. We're not sure exactly what date we'll return. We're going to try to establish a date so that our, uh, our crew uh, colleagues who are having the breakfast uh, right back 
behind me are going to be returning. Uh, evidently, there are some very important and very uh, striking moments, uh, incredible moments, some which are uh, plans, uh, for example, the uh, exit from the station, uh, which uh, are particularly intense as opposed to uh, remaining outside. But this just keeps uh, to entertain the station and enables us to engage in our research. And the, uh, there's some 230, 232 experiments have been told for a six-month period. Uh, there are a dozen of which are directly, uh, which have, I've already been, one of those uh, which is directly related to interest. Uh, this is the, uh, the, green, uh, the green triangle anniversary. We'll put some little balloons out there to note it. This is a small community. Uh, we all have the mission of being uh, on mission every day, and it's a very agreeable uh, feeling. Hello, Thomas, who's a courtier of French television. Uh, when you arrived on the uh, ESS, uh, you've never had a, as large a population of people. Uh, how does this great, uh, how do you live there with so many people on board? How do you get along? Well, in effect, uh, there are many people here. We are alovenous. It's not uh, overcrowded, really, but nonetheless, there are a fair number of people. It goes along very well. Uh, we find that our hosts are perfect. There are only six sleeping uh, positions. There's the seventh, which will be coming, a sleeping slot. Uh, so that'll give us a chance to sleep, I imagine. But uh, six uh, uh, sleeping slots for 11 uh, crew members. Uh, they are pretty much everywhere. We uh, take care not to bump into each other. We train for that, of course. Normally, we engage in uh, uh, speleological and uh, uh, undersea uh, training uh, to be sure uh, to respect what is important for people to uh, allow them their space. That we do have a, uh, a toilet uh, system on the Russian side and one on the American side that's only two toilets for 11 people for the course of the day, but uh, this will not be a problem. This is the... Hello, Thomas. Have you uh, initiated uh, certain small rituals among yourselves, uh, setting up rules as to how you work together and interact? Yes, uh, we have no advice uh, regarding uh, how we uh, install ourselves. It's been a week now. Uh, we don't need too much explicit, uh, too explicit rules because uh, many of the people on this team uh, are veterans. Very few are here for their first mission. We've been here for quite a while. We know that it's important to uh, work uh, under fairly intimate conditions, uh, close conditions, uh, in this uh, small uh, space spaces that uh, we ensure that each individual has as we take attention, pay attention that uh, the last persons who have arrived who might, for example, uh, are last of the toilet, uh, we prepare uh, for the, uh, the toilets for the next person that comes. These are everyday details that we uh, take care of. It. Uh, you don't have to be trained uh, as an astronaut to be able to do that, but it's the normal uh, training that a person would uh, uh, learn in order to share his life with other people. We get along very well. We're constantly joking around. You noticed that there was uh, the anniversary party, which has begun. You can see it behind me. Hello. This is from the uh, agency, the space agency. I'd like to know, with the pandemic, whether your scientific experiments have been affected, is there something that could help you uh, to protect you against COVID? Uh, uh, and if not, what is the experiment, the experience that will have an impact uh, with you? How will it uh, affect you? COVID. We do not have a scientific uh, schedule or program, uh, un unfortunately or not, is decided many years in, uh, in advance to be sent to the station. We have no particular experience concerning the, uh, the pandemic, but we do have a lot of uh, experience with the uh, immunological uh, system, which protects us against infections and uh, all kinds of microbes and viruses. We also have uh, some interesting uh, experiments uh, regarding the uh, antibacterial, antiviral uh, services, which do not retain viruses and uh, microbes that come out of contact. And of course, we have to be able to keep uh, the station always clean. Every Saturday we clean. We disinfect all of the surfaces we touch. Uh, these, uh, for example, these blue rails that keep us uh, oriented. And, uh, and so we have uh, antimicrobial uh, 
uh, measures that we install, uh, which you can see in a hospital or an airport, in order to be able to uh, prevent the propagation of a pandemic. And this is something that uh, we're uh, spending an important part of our time to uh, on board here to con uh, control for, so we can continue our scientific experiments. You, uh, uh, from 39A at Kennedy Space Center, 1900, Michael Collins, of course, used the same one. So it's, uh, I wonder whether this, uh, you feel uh, the a little bit of the, the tradition and the presence of Michael Collins having taken off from the same. I don't know if I'm a pioneer. I feel that I really walk in the paths of my predecessors. This is the, not the first uh, long, uh, long-term long uh, journey. This is something that uh, has been done by others. Before, there were no telephones. No, I think that evidently we have all learned uh, a lot from the experience uh, that we learned of the death of Michael Collins with a great deal of uh, sadness. I was able to do uh, take off from the uh, Russian uh, Baikonur or uh, aerodrome or space uh, sport uh, following the uh, paths of uh, Yuri Gagarin. Uh, but uh, we all follow in the paths of our predecessors. We now have to continue. We're the first generation uh, from the 2009 uh, uh, grade uh, promotion that did not uh, live through the original space travel of the first generation. Uh, we have a lot of respect for what was done before as we prepare to return to the moon, uh, certainly, but uh, we're looking forward to the future, of course, uh, with the uh, European Space Program and uh, coordination with uh, NASA and other partners. Uh, we know that in a few years we're going to be on the surface of the moon, and this is something that we constantly keep in mind as we work. Hello, Thomas. This is from the uh, Francon uh, Network. Uh, can you tell us? Hello, Antoine. We are not, uh, we haven't set it uh, firmly in. There are four that are uh, programmed for our mission. It depends on uh, the material that comes uh, and, uh, with the cargo. Uh, we're going to be deploying an entire station. Uh, I'm not visiting uh, to you, but just giving you an idea of what's on the various uh, sides. On the left and the right, we have the panels. We're going to be installing those. Uh, we're going to be able to go about 40 miles. Uh, 40 meters away, maybe 50 meters uh, to the left and 40 to the right, so as to uh, fix these uh, panels uh, at a certain uh, nearby distance. We're going to be doing all of that about June or July, but once again, it depends on the arrival of the materials and the equipment through the various space uh, vehicles, uh, 21 and 22, uh, which are now well positioned to take off. But if there's a little bit of uncertainty regarding the time frame, we're not sure that the exit uh, will happen. Uh, but we're looking forward to uh, the prospects of it. Hello, Thomas. This is a Mirama. Oh, tell me about uh, your uh, visualization of uh, sunrise, or about 16 of them, I believe, that you do within a very narrow period. Uh, so the sun in space, is that the question? Well, what happens, it depends on people. I, uh, I uh, adapt well to it. My primary capacity is that everything uh, runs well without any problems. While we're in the cabin, uh, we're uh, tied into our sleeping slots. Uh, some people do get uh, uh, more or less uh, feel a certain uh, disease or not rather unease at having the sunrise so many times, other people not. I think it's rather uh, restful uh, to be totally uh, without, to, totally weightless. It depends, of course, on the individual. Uh, there are people who close their windows uh, at midnight and who'll be uh, sleeping late until 15 minutes before the day starts uh, on Earth. But uh, he, we here on board, uh, sometimes we see that there's a time lag uh, which affects us in some ways. But tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, we're not quite sure. But there will be a moment to send uh, some of us back to Earth. Well, uh, undoubtedly, they're going to have to get up in the middle of the night, and we have to adapt to it, which is something that uh, we're accustomed to. Hello, Thomas. Uh, Tell me about 
Are there any sensations that uh, feel different now from compared to your last mission? Well, the uh, Ariane uh, was a special moment for me. The station has changed, but it's more or less identical in its essentials. Uh, although there are a number of new uh, fortune uh, features, uh, I think that really uh, turns me on. I, I'd like to see novelty in my work. It's very special. You've already uh, been launched a number of times. Well, actually, over 100, I believe, with satellites. Everything works very smoothly. Yeah, this is the third mission. And so there are three takeoffs and one landing at the moment. Uh, but we have uh, two uh, uh, more uh, planned for. This is something of a new thing. Uh, we feel comfortable on uh, takeoff, no problem there. It's rather spacious. Yeah, this is the modern uh, vehicle. Uh, well, it was a little bit complicated to find all of one's uh, objects and things to work with because everything was somewhat hidden and integrated. It looks very nice, it's true, but it's new. It's like with a car. A uh, car has to be attractive and pleasant to be in, but we're accustomed to things that are functional in the uh, space station. And so we had to become accustomed a little bit, but this uh, went through very easily. But it was about 26 hours, I think it took us to get to the station. Uh, very comfortable time. Uh, it passed as if it was a matter of minutes. Uh, you know, there are a number of scientific uh, experiments to be done uh, aboard the ESS. Which ones uh, fascinate you the most? Well, it's hard to choose because there are 232 experiments. Uh, there's America, the Russian, the Japanese. I have one that uh, interests me a great deal which makes me dream a little bit, is the, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the experiment with uh, mini brains, which is quite an advance. We're going to be trying to uh, work uh, with aspects of the human brain, uh, and we're going to be uh, studying this, of course, uh, with the scientific method aboard the space station, and we're going to see the results within the laboratories, and we're aware of the many uh, uh, applications that can ensue, such as the treatment of uh, medical conditions, pathologies. And uh, with these mini brains that we have on here, we'll be taking pictures, but it's all very interesting. We also have an educational uh, experience, which will be for classes uh, with a blob. It makes me think of a horror film, uh, The Blob, uh, the uh, 1990s, 1980s uh, science fiction horror films. This on the uh, space station, I hope, will... Uh, will uh, be conducted very successfully. Now, the last question. Hello, Thomas. Guillaume Jean for uh, Space. Well, it's very happy to see you again. For my question, when you arrived on the ESS in uh, uh, 2016, uh, you had a very good uh, experience with Tian Gong in next June. During the uh, tradition of inhabited flights, do we exchange between the ESS and the Chinese station so that you can put into practice your experience? Uh, no volume. Mr. Pesquet is speaking. His lips are moving. Your microphone is switched off. I still speaking, no sound. Copy your microphone. Please continue on space to ground two. The question. Aboard the space station and the uh, camera, the microphone. Yes, the uh, cooperation with Beijing. As a political question, of course, is being worked out. We're working a little bit uh, with a green light pending. Well, this is... But we know that uh, in real life it's possible, for which there will have to be an international will to do so. But I think that uh, we have some very uh, interesting projects uh, of our own in Europe, Canada, as well as in China, Japan, the United States, and Russia. And there's some additional projects uh, and uh, experiments that have been added. We have to see how we uh, coordinate and collaborate if, uh, if that uh, was the decision. Uh, if it is made, uh, all we have to do is uh, to learn to uh, start to work together. Thank you very much, Thomas. It's been a very uh, nice conversation with you.
thank uh, all of you. And uh, welcome again to the space station. And I wish all of you a good day. And uh, also the uh, anniversary or, uh, for Victor, who's coming here, perhaps. Oh, no. Victor will not appear. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from ESA. Uh, station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.